Manch. Yeah, I just woke up. Um, I'm gonna take a nap, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to make it in today. The weather's just not giving. What? Yeah, just like the bromic pressure or something. It's like sending me. Wait, so why can't you come in? Oh my God, not you not understanding me. Basically, today's just not the vibe. The weather seems sus and I'm low-key anxious. So you can't come in because of your anxiety? Bet. The difference between Gen Z and millennials is millennials think these things, but we would never say them to our employer. But Gen Z is completely unhinged and can't not complain. Also, the official Arthur TikTok account posted that, which makes it even more incredible. Future's now, old man. There are two crazy viral stories I wanna tell you about. The first is about a woman who's being praised for leaving her husband to travel and be a lesbian. The second is about a blind woman who married for love and then gained back her eyesight. Remember the show Candy on Hulu with Jessica Biel? Now HBO Max wants to take a stab at that story. Ooh, maybe that wasn't the best analogy. And finally, I will share my thoughts as a young conservative woman on controversial internet star, Andrew Tate's social media ban. Was it for the best? I'm Alex Clark, and this is Poplitics. This story from the New York Post has gone viral involving 37-year-old Lauren Burgess, a woman who left her husband during the pandemic because she decided she was a lesbian and wanted to travel and live out of her van. Uh, are we already forgetting about Gabby Petito? The article raves about how she's truly happy now because she did what she wanted to do. Of course, the true translation to all of this is that she's actually a selfish, narcissistic person who will only realize the error of her ways once old age sets in. But we don't talk about Bruno. On the flip side, and a happier story, another viral New York Post story is about a young blind woman named Sophia Cora who lost her eyesight at 18. Despite her condition worsening, she goes to Adams State University in Colorado to study psychology, and that's when she meets her now husband, Christian. They were just friends, and he helped her raise almost $20,000 for eye surgery. Well, she realized she had feelings for him and knew that she wanted to be with him. They fall in love, and a year after her surgery, she starts to regain her vision and could see him clearly for the first time. That's when she saw how gorgeous he is, an absolute cutie 10, and yes, now they're married. Which of these stories sounds healthier and more fulfilling and life-giving to you? True love is the greatest thing in the world. Except for nice MLT, mutton, lettuce, and tomato sandwich when the mutton is nice and lean and the tomato is ripe. It's so perky, I love that. Remember a few months back when I was raving about Candy on Hulu with Jessica Biel? She plays that housewife who murders her best friend after sleeping with her husband. The show did very well, and Jessica Biel got tons of praise for this role. I personally think it's the best work of her career in an absolute chef's kiss show. I can never do that. Candy is a show about a murder that takes place in 1980, suburban Texas. Hey, y'all. The show is an examination of how this awful thing came to happen, and it becomes quite complicated and with all the secrets that everyone was harboring. Are you okay? I'm fine. Oh, Lord, Candy. Did you hear? These adults in this period were given this prescription. You get married, you have the two children, you have the nice house in the suburbs. That's all you need to be happy. She has all these things in her life. She's popular. She's a pillar of the community. So you really try to understand how could a person be pushed to a breaking point like that? Are you having an affair? with Alan. Well, now HBO Max is doing the exact same show, but they're calling it Love and Death. It will star Elizabeth Olsen and is made by the same guy who did Big Little Lies. The series will come out next year. Okay, look, I like Elizabeth Olsen. I love these mini series based on real true crime stories, but why, when one streaming service does something successful, another one does the exact same thing? Like, we watched Candy. Why do we wanna watch this again? Why wouldn't you pick a different story? Honestly, if I was Jessica Biel, I'd be pretty pissed off because I just think that is like her role now. And if you watch Candy, would you be down to watch this one or are you kind of like thrown off by this? I grabbed the axe. I do want to discuss Andrew Tate for a moment, and no, that's not Pitbull. Bada bing, bada boom. Andrew Tate is a famous online influencer whose primary audience is dudes, and young dudes especially, really just flock to him. I mean, he gives a lot of advice about money and risk-taking and stuff, 
But he also gives very controversial advice about dating. Let me ask you a question. Do you have a girlfriend? Yes. Are I you do. loyal to your girlfriend? Yes. Do you want to be? Yes. Why? So He's a I, sin. And, I, and I see. It. No, it's all a sin. No. no, I understand it. I understand. Carry on. I'm listening. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so I, I, and I feel like the best way. <laughs> According to Bloomberg, he has said publicly that female sexual assault victims bear some responsibility and suggested that men date women who are 18 to imprint on them. He has also described himself as absolutely a misogynist. Now, literally, because of his unpopular opinions about relationships and women, he has been banned by Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, and Facebook. Do I think the advice he gives young men is healthy? character building, going to inspire more men to grow up and get married and take some personal responsibility in their relationships? Probably not. But I don't think that he shouldn't be allowed to say those super controversial opinions either. You know what's great about a douchebag like him sharing his even douchebagier opinions? Someone else can come along and explain why those ideas are wrong. You know, like, like a real conversation. He didn't break any rules. That's why I think we should all be paying attention to a ban to this extent. We are living in the days when saying the wrong thing about politics or culture is now cause for a disappearance. Poof. Now you can't even have a burning hot take on relationship advice. And allegedly, platforms like TikTok are using a software to track down any content in violation of its standards. But he just believes things that the beta males who run big tech don't agree with or like his take, so they shut him down. The anti-free speech left is worried about the impact his conversations may have on women, which is rich because they can't define what a woman is and will remove women from their platform to refuse to say a man is a woman. So you only care about women sometimes, right? Who is more of a threat to women? I'd love to ask Facebook and Instagram and TikTok and YouTube. Is it Andrew Tate's ideas or is it the trans movement? Don't be melodramatic. A little behind the scenes, we already have all of September and October spillover guests, which means we're booking guests now for November and December. And I already think that season three might end up being my favorite so far. I cannot wait for you to hear from some of these incredible people with the most unfathomable stories and also learn new things that will really challenge your worldview, including this week's episode. My entire team and I have been so anxious and excited for this one to drop. I'll give you more hints tomorrow, but just really ask yourself, if you believe that you're open-minded, even as a conservative. And if you think you are, this week's episode is going to challenge the heck out of you. Wow, did that get your attention? I must be good at this job. <laughs> okay, that was really cheesy. Tap the heart or thumbs up on this episode. I say thumbs up for those that watch on YouTube, which you can do, by the way. A lot of people like to watch the show daily on their TV. Let me know in the comments how you feel about the Andrew Tate all out ban. They're acting like he's Alex Jones or something. <laughs> I'm kind of retarded. Tell me if you think that woman who left her husband to travel and be gay did what is best for her and she's ultimately gonna be happier or if she'll be unhappy in the long run. Finally, message this episode to a Gen Z friend or Gen Z coworker. Poplitics is back tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. It's pop culture without the propaganda every single day. I'm Alex Clark and this is Poplitics. Clearly, Poplitics is best served visually, but you can also listen to Poplitics if you just want the audio. Subscribe to us anywhere you get your podcasts. Apple, Spotify, iHeart, TuneIn, and more. Also, make sure that if you are listening to the podcast version, you leave us a five-star review. And don't forget, subscribe to Poplitics on YouTube.